Welcome Team Barebo Project. We're so excited to have you all. I hope that this video helps clear up some questions that may come with the programming and the idea with what's going on. Obviously your goal is to shoot a minimum of three, maybe four days a week. Four optimal, maybe even five or six, depending on what you have going on. We ask that you try to follow the programming as close as possible to make this investment in your uh, archery training as beneficial as, as, as it can be. The goal with this is to provide you a very specific plan to attack your goals and make sure that you are able to find a way to achieve them. So if you just shoot for fun, that's great, but we have a lot more fun when things go the right direction. I have found that in the last two years of running this program, not just for myself, but for, my, for the shooters that I work with and doing the lessons that I do, that the, the program is built around the volume, the drills, and the mechanics of success. We are gonna do everything possible to make sure that you guys achieve your archery goals. Thanks so much, welcome to the team, and good luck on the shooting line. I wanted to give you a quick rundown of how the programming is to be looked at and make sure that you understand in full what the programming means. So there's a couple, this is the very first day of programming written up here. And what the programming is written out, it's written out in a four week cycle with the most amount of shooting being done on week four. And then it declines slowly, three, two, one. And then there's an additional programming that's written on the bottom. And what that programming is, is in addition to leading up to a big tournament. So if you follow the basic programming um, in your regular training cycle, you will still continue to see slower but positive results within your shooting and your control. What happens with the um, idea of periodization is that when you get four weeks out from a tournament, you really want to ramp up the amount of arrows you're shooting and then the program is written so that you will then continue, you will decline a little bit so that right before that big tournament, you are well rested, you are prepared and you're shooting at peak. Uh, a lot of times when you're shooting high volume, you'll actually see moments where your performance will either plateau a little bit or maybe even decline because your body is really, um, your body is in kind of recovery mode. You've shot high volume, your body needs to take a break, your mind needs to take a break, and what happens is as you decline, your scores start to come back up because you're getting rest and you're recovering from all of the previous volume that you're shooting prior. So with this, week one, and just to explain what it is, Week one is three blind bail, one draw hold times three warm up. What that means is that you're gonna walk up to your bail, you're gonna shoot three blind bail. So that is three to five yards. You're gonna run your shot process, set your, set your stance, go through your steps, set your hook, set your grip, raise to draw, come into your anchor, aim, close your eyes, and feel the shot. The idea with blind bail is that you take away the anxiety of aiming, take away the necessity to shoot a longer distance, and you slowly concentrate on a solid bow arm, a steady aim, and a fluid release, and make sure that your alignment is correct. Now, we're gonna be doing shooting evaluations on all of you, so you're gonna to start to see some changes in your form, but you're still able to start this. This also is gonna identify when you're having issues because it's increasingly difficult to hold if you're out of alignment in this position to do a draw hold and or blind bail and shoot a repeatable shot. So your blind bail should be very close and you close your eyes after you aim, but you don't close your eyes and let go. You have to have that two to three second pause um, with blind bail because let's face it, we want our arrow to float for two or three seconds before that release occurs. A draw hold is what we do in numerous volumes. So it can be five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds. John, I know, Grayson, maybe even, do, they do them in 60 second increments. My form starts to break down personally between 30 and 45 seconds. I will be doing draw holds leading up to indoor nationals, 
Um, I'm programmed accordingly to that in order to see my scores go uh, and prepare for that where I want to be at my strongest, my du most durable. I want my, I want my body to be conditioned to shooting high volume so that when it comes to shooting 120 arrows in a weekend, that's not so bad. Um, it's super important that you follow that the protocol of the volume when you're leading up to a tournament and I will walk you through that personally um, with whatever individual tournaments you have coming up we can we can work those details out because the programming all of you might be in a different place but you're still able to use the same programming you just add the volume according to what your competition schedule is like so the draw hold is very important typically 20 yards on your 40 centimeter and or 50 meter face. And a draw hold is just like blind bell where you run your entire process, but when you get back and you hit your anchor point, you just stabilize. You make sure your alignment is correct and you stabilize, but you relax at the same time. You make sure that you allow the tip of the arrow to float at your lollipop or your point on covering the gold or however it is you aim. It is also super important that we are aiming with the point of the arrow. We can't, our goal is to not aim off. So if any of you are aiming with your point off of the goal in some fashion, we need to fix that. That seems to be happening pretty often, especially with new shooters who are maybe a little inexperienced. They don't know how to fix their tune to get it there. So that's something that you need to let us know about so we can help you. Um, with that being said, the draw holds are super important and they're, you're going to see them in different increments. You will see, as you see down here, DH. DH is very is going to be your abbreviation for draw hold. You'll see it throughout the programming every single day, if not every week, um, at a minimum every week. So you're gonna do three blind bell, one draw hold times three. So that's going to be a total of nine shots with one draw hold every three shots. So you're gonna go to your do, do your blind bail, then do a draw hold. Do your blind bail, do draw hold, blind bail, draw hold. All right, that should make clear enough sense. Then you do your warm up. Your warm up, these are just four movements that I use um, specifically before a tournament, for practices, and so on and so forth. I don't care what warm up you use, just do not stretch first and then try to shoot. That's kind of counterintuitive. You want to. Um, warm up first, you need to do something that gets the blood moving and gets your body in archery mode. Then I'm a fan of just doing mobility work. Um, so we always do something that is of benefit to us that gets us started before we do our warm up. A warm up can be just your basic arm circles. It can also be what we call cross body. Cross body is just take your arms and it's just swinging them side to side, rotating above and below like this, you come all the way out till it stops, and then here, so it's just like this. Super easy, nothing crazy, and you wanna do maybe um, 10 to 15 of these, maybe even more, right after you get done doing your uh, initial shooting or drill, that's first. Open, close the gate, super, super simple. It's really good for stretching out the core and the shoulders, but you start with your hands forward. Hopefully that's there. You start with your hands forward, straight ahead, and when you, I have to move forward, you open the gate, keeping your gaze forward, come back, open the gate again, come back, open the gate again. You really start to stretch out your shoulders, the back of your triceps. Um, including your core and your back, mostly your lumbar area and your thoracic area, but it will still at least get you moving. It gets the blood flowing and it gets you sort of, um, get your muscles lubricated and ready to do some work. So, um, and then pass-throughs, personal favorite. Um, we use these TheraBands. If you need one, let me know. We can uh, get one shipped out to you for a few bucks. They are phenomenal. I'm not a big fan of just those long stretch bands that you get sometimes through the USA Archery certification and stuff like that because I like them to be um, connected and you can use these for multiple purposes. Stretch bands will work. If that's what you have, that's what you're gonna use, that's fine. 
but it's super important to be able to run your shop process with these and I don't feel as though that the carryover of just a big wide band is, is as good. So pass-throughs are where you stand and you open your arms out, keeping them perfectly straight with the TheraBand right at your waistline here. And when you do is you take your, the TheraBand straight up and over your head, keeping your arms straight the entire time, all the way down and then back. If you can't do this with your current situation, you could simply use like a wooden dowel broomstick um, or something that's long enough that you can get your arms out nice and wide and then you're able to do this. This is great mobility work for your back, your shoulders. And again, if there's one movement that I would do every single time I shoot archery, pass-throughs are it for sure. So those are just four options. If you have other options you like to use, that is fine. I'm not gonna micromanage what your warm-ups are, but just make sure that what you're doing is movement and not just static stretching. You want to do stretches after you do those warm-ups? That's fine. Your body has to be warm first before you decide to do stretching. Don't stretch cold, okay? Don't stretch cold. Then, with going through your programming, you're going to go into um, one 10-second draw hold and then 10 by 3 a blind bell. So you're going to do a 10-second draw hold, and then you're going to shoot 10 ends of three shots of blind bail to get started. That's your cash in, you're cashing in. That's what you need to pay the piper in order to get into the fun part of the training. Once you have that completed, you're going to do 90 arrows scored. So just week one, these numbers will fluctuate. The programming will change and if you have questions, like I said, shoot me a message. But you're gonna shoot 90 arrow scored and you're gonna document your arrow average. What you'll see is every week on a Monday, you're gonna document your arrow average and see which direction that goes. The goal obviously is to see a gradual incline in your arrow average. But what we're doing is you shoot those 90 arrows and then each week, if you're, say you're prepping for a tournament, week three, we want, hypothetically, say you're at like a 7.3 arrow average per 90. So, you know, you take your total score that you shot, you divide it by 90 arrows, you see what that is. We want this number to slowly go up. If you're doing all of the programming, you're shooting the volume you're supposed to, it's very crucial that you're doing everything together. Just shooting arrows and not reinforcing the proper movements, the proper positions, and the proper feeling, for, for lack of a better term, um, you're never really gonna see the improvement that you're looking for. This is designed that you can do all of this if you're shooting meaningful, probably within like an hour and a half session. Maybe even better. I've shot 30 arrow rounds at six, in six arrow ends, within 30 minutes. So it's doable. There's a lot of opportunity for you to hit high volume. That as you go through this programming and you learn the details of how the programming works, you understand the lingo per se, and you get a, you get a feeling for what you need to do, how long it's gonna take you, it's gonna be nice to not have the pressure of just showing up and shooting and just hoping that it's a better night. With this programming, you're gonna be able to see exactly where your faults are and you're going to be doing the things that are going to make sure that you're reinforcing all of the right stuff. Uh, I, it's definitely similar to what training would be like for an exercise program or something along those lines. The idea being that you're doing accessory movements, you're doing things that are going to reinforce um, proper body positions and reinforce proper mental state. You'll see where there's moments that your slow, your progression will, your progression will increase, and plat. When and if you do plateau, oftentimes it will be because of a busy schedule, and say you just shot extra that week, or and you didn't get to do all of the other stuff. 
if at all possible, the day before a big tournament, say you're not able to be super committed to the program for a specific week, but you have a tournament coming up, if you can do anything, the day before the tournament, do blind bail and draw holds. If you do them on your own, you do them on your own, that's fine. It is important that you are doing draw holds with a target face. It is om it's good for strength work, but for the mental side of doing draw holds um, and the benefit of doing draw holds, you need to be holding on a target as if you were shooting for purpose. Um, also, make sure that within your round, you have the time and ability to do draw holds while you're shooting for score. If a shot did not go correctly and you hit your anchor, did a drive by and it wasn't good, make sure that immediately you throw another arrow and draw back purposefully, do your draw hold, reinforce the right message, let down, relax, take a nice big deep breath, do four seconds in, four seconds out, four second hold, bring your heart rate down, and run your shot the right way. You'll notice that every time that you do that draw hold, most times I should say, not every time, but most times, you do that draw hold, that next arrow is gonna be easier. In situations when you're in elimination shoot offs, you don't have that opportunity, but during qualification rounds, local shoots, invitational, stuff like that, you do. Highly recommend you do those. And I, we also recommend that you do those letdowns even during your training sessions. So you have to, there's, there's going to be moments where we're going to push you to shoot without letdowns throughout the programming, but nine times, unless it calls for that, let down on a bad shot so that you have that confidence to let down and that, dare I say, maturity to let down during a tournament when the shot doesn't feel quite right. If you guys have any questions, reach out to us.